In this sequence of videos, we're going to cover some basic definitions and properties of ideals, and also the definition and some examples of factor rings. To begin, let's start with a definition and then some examples of ideals. So a subring i of a ring r is called an ideal if for every little r in the ring r and little a in the subring i, both of the elements r times a and a times r belong to i. So remembering that because we're not requiring rings to be commutative under multiplication, we need those two different requirements here. And I'd like to note that this seems similar at first to just the idea of being a subring, because a subring needs to be closed under multiplication. However, it only needs to be closed when you start out by picking both of the little elements belonging to the subring itself, i. In this particular definition, we require one of the elements to belong to i, but we want to be more broad and we want to allow the second element to belong to the larger ring r instead of just the subring i. Some examples, two of the easiest examples to deal with, just like when you're talking about subgroups, are what are we would typically consider trivial examples. So the ideal, which is just the element zero, is an ideal, and the whole ring is an example of an ideal. Slightly less trivially is that if we work in our ring R to be the integers, then the ideal, uh, the subring multiples of n inside the integers, happens to be more than a subring, it happens to be an ideal. So the justification for this is if you pick an element of n times z, so you pick some number of the integers that's divisible by n, or is a multiple of n. If I pick any other integer in the world and multiply it by a multiple of n, the resulting product is still a multiple of n. And so this turns out to be stronger than a subring of the integers. It turns out to be an ideal. Another important example is called the ideal generated by an element. And this should remind you uh, way back in group theory when we would do the subgroup generated by a particular element, you should be reminded of that here. If we start with R, assuming that R is a commutative ring, and we pick an element A that belongs to the ring, what we can do is we can build what's called the ideal generated by that element A, and we're going to use that same notation we did for subgroups. The ideal generated by A, with those angular brackets, is the set of multiples of A, little r times A, where r is an element of r. This will be an ideal because we're making the assumption that this is a commutative ring, so I don't have to separately consider the multiplication in the other order. And one way that we can generalize this is, okay, what if instead of starting with one element of the ring, I wanted to start with n elements of the ring and sort of build the smallest ideal that I can that contains those n elements? That's the notion of the ideal generated by the elements a1 through an. So I use that same angular bracket, but I put all the different elements separated by commas inside the angular brackets. And what this is equal to is all possible combinations of taking an element of the ring, any element of the ring you want, r1, multiplying it by a1, and then adding on to that some other element of the ring, r2, multiplied by a2, and so on and so forth up until you get to some nth element of the ring r sub n multiplied by a sub n, where all of the little r sub i's belong to the ring and the a sub i's are, sp are special elements. So all possible things that we could get by adding things of that form together. And this is going to be an ideal called the ideal generated by a1 through a n. To do what I have here also under examples of ideals, is just as when we were testing things for subrings, the notion of an ideal is not so far away from the notion of a subring. So there's a really nice theorem that can help us check to see that we have an ideal of a ring uh, quite quickly. And this is, again, very similar to the uh, subring test that we've seen before. So let's start out by supposing that i is a subset of the ring r. If three properties are met, then we're going to know that i is an ideal. Um, the first one is, we need to know that the ideal is not empty. And the second is, we need to know that whenever we start with elements of the ideal, A and B, that their difference belongs to the ideal. And the third criteria is, we need to double check that the elements RA and AR, 
belong to the ideal I whenever A is an element of the ideal and R is an element of the ring. And if these three properties are met, then we know that I is an ideal of R. And the proof of this theorem is really quite straightforward. Uh, if you go back to condition three and you require not just that R be an element of R, but you now require that R belong to I, then the statement of the theorem is exactly the same as the subring test that we've seen before. Uh, if it happens to be the case that R does not belong to I, then the reason we need this to be satisfied is because that's what's built into the definition of an ideal. Now, just as an exercise uh, to verify your understanding, what you should do is you should work with a specific example. So take a look at the ring R, which is just Z mod 12, a nice finite example of a ring here. And what you should work out is you should determine what MR looks like when M is a couple of various different possibilities, a number like 3, a number like 8, and a number like 7. Then what you should do after working out those specific examples of M, with R also being specific, you should try to broaden your understanding, try to come up with a hypothesis about what M Z mod N looks like in the arbitrary ring Z mod N, uh, and you should have two different cases here. The two different cases you should have are where M and N happen to be co-prime and where M and N happen to share a non-trivial common divisor. And if you work out this specific example, you should be able to handle both cases because I've encompassed with the M's that I've given you for your specific example, I've taken both cases into account.